Mike, how, with the challenge of getting this team back on a short week, uh, how big is the opportunity, though, coming off the win against the Bills, now hosting uh, the Chiefs, uh, a team that's been in the AFC Championship game the last three seasons? Yeah, I mean, obviously we have a ton of respect for, you know, the Chiefs, their organization, you know, what, what Andy's been able to do there. Um, you know, I think it's just, uh, you know, again, we talk about what you do after a loss, what you do after a win. And, uh, you know, hopefully we're able to, to, to compartmentalize and, um, and move forward here quickly with our preparation on the Chiefs. Coming off a win like you had over the Bills going against this team, does this, like, does that make it like one of those kind of like GPS or see where we're at type of games? Because you just mentioned, you know, the importance of coming off a win. Yeah, I mean, I think you always have to try to, you know, every week validate what you do and what you've done and try to get going on some consistency and, I think that starts with preparation and understanding who you're playing. Um, there are some similarities, you know. I mean, certainly with the with the quarterbacks and, and the way that they can extend plays and their talent um, and, and how they play the game. With yeah, Mahomes, Maven right in considering his experience here. Uh, I mean, I think that was probably some of it, and you know, we'll see where where Greg's at and, and how much he is, is where his recall is, and you know, as the game plan uh, gets closer to Sunday. When Mahomes gets on the move, do, do you see, like, do his receivers have rules or are they improvising with him at that point? I don't think there's rules. I, I think they kind of all just understand where he wants them and where they go, and he does a great job of finding them. Uh, I mean, I think there's probably rules, and then they kind of get you know, broken. Uh, I think that they know that if they get open, that there's a good chance that they'll, uh, they'll get the ball. Frustrate a defense as much as anybody. That well, way. I mean, I think that that's something that's always um, a challenge when when you play Pat Patrick, and um, you know, we've we've played him a few times, and you know whether he drifts away from pressure or he seems to know where it's coming from, uh, his ability to, to put it in spaces out in front of guys, uh, and man coverage, his anticipation, um, you know, really played turned the game around last year. You know, there's a long scramble right there before half, so. Um, you know, it would be important that not only we try to defend him in, in the in when he throws it, is when he runs it as well. Kevin, I know we talked at the end of the last season just about maybe wanting to improve, and he's off to a good start this year, three picks, and one more cover for a touchdown. Has he done anything different, or has he just kind of put himself in a good, better spot? I mean, I think that sometimes those – you know, it's 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 cyclical. You know, I mean, I don't think he's playing any different. I mean, he obviously played well for us last year. We got a lot of you know, faith and confidence in Kevin and um, you know his leadership and everything that he does for us. Um, you know, so that you know, I don't get caught up in in the statistics of it. I try to get caught up in uh, the execution, and so it's always great. I think that you know, for players that they can um, they can contribute and, and have statistical success, and so. You know, I think he's. I think he's playing fast, and you know, again, like the other day, that was that was a play that was attributed to, to Nico. You know, I mean, Kevin was on his guy. Danico hit the quarterback, and so you know, he understands that in man coverage, and when he's covering somebody, that their job's not to let him catch the ball, and he does a good job in zone to defending the deep part of the field for us. What kind of challenges does the, that Chiefs offense present? Whereas you know, got Tyreek Hill, he stretches the field. Kelsey is so good working the middle. Of, how, how much stress does that put on the Well, they're just a lot of athletic, a lot of speed. You know, they're, they, they, they revolve around speed and, um, you know, there, there's a lot of precision to what they do. You know, there's a lot of plays that repeat, um, something that Andy isn't, isn't afraid to, to do is to repeat plays. You know, and it's just that their um, efficiency with them is, is outstanding. The players know um, you know what to do, and they're they're executing, and so you know, it may look different based on a coverage that they see, and, and if it's man, then you know he may want to go to to Kelsey somewhere because of the matchup, or if it's zone, he he knows that you know there's a receiver that's going to be throttling down um, differently in in each zone, and so they create a lot of speed, and and, and it's a vertical vertical threat, you know, passing attack, and then there's some. Some underneath elements with with guys working working underneath as well. With the release of Townsend, the presumption is that Brett would be back. How good would it be to have him back? And are there things you can do with him as your regular guy, maybe in terms of directional punting that you wouldn't want to try to do with a, with a replacement? 
uh, yeah, I mean, I think Brett's feeling better, and hopefully we'll get him back, um, you know, towards the end of the week. Um, you know, we'll see how he's how he kicks when he gets back. But you know, I mean, he's our he's our punter. Um, you know, right now he still has to go through protocol, uh, and you know, hopefully we can, you know, we can punt better and you know cover better. Did you get a chance to? Um see what Brady Breeze might be able to do on special teams or you know do you, do you just like his kind of you know athleticism and potential in that regard I mean we'll see where it is this week he's uh, I think we we moved him to the active roster um, you know he was working his way back from from the, from the IR and uh, you know again we'll see you know where where it goes as far as who we make active for the game Shane has found a good rhythm as a defensive play caller I mean, I think here's what I always say about, you know, calling plays. Make sure that you get them in there in a timely fashion. Um, make sure that the players understand you know, what they're supposed to be doing. And, and, I, and I think that, you know, there, there's things that we've changed a little bit. And, you know, we were, you know, doing well on third down, didn't do so well the other night. Um, but I, you know, I think that they're you know they're making changes. We try to make some changes and adjustments as as the game goes on and things that we like. And uh, you know, I think that the players ultimately are the ones that you know that that execute. No different than the last play of the game. It was the same thing we called earlier, you know, or called previously in the season. And then the players went out and executed it and made a play. What are some characteristics of, of Andy Reid coach teams that have kind of been constant over the years, and how do you like the way he's run his program? Well, I mean, I would say that Andy's been a you know a great mentor uh, for me as a coach. You know, going back to, to when I was in Houston, um, just to be able to have conversations with him. Um, you know, he's coached a lot of great players, um, coached a lot of great teams. You know, every meeting that I've ever been associated with, you know, Andy tries to, to give input with to, to, to coaches, younger coaches. Um, so I'm thankful for that relationship. Um, you know, they're they're always very explosive offensively. I think he's got a very creative offensive mind. Um, seems like the players enjoy playing for him. They have a good time. They've been ultimately successful. You know, and I'm not. Saying like they they have a good time because they win, you know. I mean, a lot of these had a lot of success in this league and um, you know, very good offensively, and it's a championship coach and a championship person. Mike, in that second half, maybe find some rhythm in the passing game that uh, can build on, especially now. You know, AJ seems to be getting his conditioning back better each week. Mm, you know, every week's different. We'll have to start the game better, Teresa. That's that's what we're focused on in Kansas City. Um, you know, trying to trying to just start faster and make sure that you know we have a good pocket for the quarterback. Um, <clears throat> try to handle the front as, as good as they are with with Jones and you know Clark. Um, you know, and some of the the guys that they're they'll rotate and play some guys inside. Um, but but that'll be a huge key for us to start there with protecting the quarterback and then you know trying to find some openings uh, against you know match coverage. When your injury report and your IR list continues to grow, can it be difficult to, to stay level-headed and keep the next man up, or is there a point where you become concerned about having enough juice? No, I think that that's uh, all part of this job, Luke, is just try to be you know, as focused and um, even keel you know, as you possibly can. I know that that's probably not always the case, um, but you just have to try to get everybody to understand that when they come into work, that they could be active for the game. They could play a large role. You know, and just look to Nick Westbrook. Um, he knows multiple positions. He's an impact player for us on special teams. Um, you know, those are the types of players that you look for, that you know, guys that can play more than one position and go out there and, you know, whether it's to block on a touchdown run, uh, to, to pick up a, a huge third down conversion, or cover a kickoff and make a tackle inside the 20. Let's try to find as many guys like that as we can. Mike, Keep your eyes open for me. Mike, just to follow up on that, how helpful has it been? I mean, the rules last year on IR and being able to bring guys back were implemented for the pandemic. With that 17th game this year, how crucial is it, particularly for you all, to now you're starting to get some guys back to be able to use that to survive these injuries? 
Yeah, I mean, I think that that's a good tool, and it's something that that we have, you know, been forced to use just because of guys, you know, been been hurt and uh, been hurt for, you know, at least three weeks. So, um, you know, with that becomes more decisions that you have to make when when guys come back off of that list. You know, so you can only have, you know, fifty three on the active, and then, so that's a fluid process of trying to decide what you want to do with the practice squad and what you want to do with the fifty three man roster as guys start to come off of uh, the IR. Often that offensive scripting at the beginning of the game is some of the most favorable stuff you've seen during the week. You guys have scored, I think, 20 in the first quarter. Any thoughts on why that hasn't worked for you so far this year? Uh, I think we continue to look at that, and that's something that we'll try to improve on. <clears throat> I think it's just you know, maybe some of the looks that we've seen uh, you know, we have to do a better job of anticipating some things that that may have you know, been different that we weren't, you know, maybe expecting. Execution, you know, is probably would always be the a, a big uh, reason. But <clears throat> you know, I, I agree with you. You know, we do have to get off to better starts and um, you know try to help ourselves early in the game. And obviously the injury list is long, but you're going with the walkthrough today. How much does that change what you can do during the course of a typical preparation? Just the ability to, to have a walkthrough? Well, doing the walkthrough as opposed to a typical Wednesday practice. Um, yeah, I mean, I just felt like I'd, I'd try to do what's best for the football team, and there's going to be, you know, we get a lot of reps done. We get a lot of, they get to see a lot of plays. We have a, you know, a group of, of show team on, on each side that, that helps us out. I mean, we'll we'll get to see plenty of plays, and we won't be able to recreate the speed, obviously, that you know, we're going to see. Even if we did practice at full speed, we're not going to recreate the speed that the, that the Chiefs have. Um, I just felt like it was an emotional, physical game. You know, a lot of guys are, are banged up, and uh, this was the decision that I felt like was best for the team. Um, bring them in there a little later, let them get some sleep. Know, get treatment at a, at a little later time, um, you know, and then get back to normal schedule tomorrow. Roger was able to make it through the whole game the other night. How important was that, both in success in the run game and in pass protection? Well, he's a premier run run player, you know, run blocker. I mean, he does a, does a fantastic job of, uh, of getting on those guys and, and covering up and finishing. Takes a lot of pride in it. You know, we gain a lot of yards over there uh, running behind him. Uh, you know, and then helping us stay stay firm in the pocket. You know, I've really enjoyed coaching Roger since he's been here, getting to know him uh, personally. Uh, it was great to see you know his mom and his sister out in Seattle. Um, you know, it just I, I enjoy coaching him and having him here. I'm glad that you know he was able to make it through the entire game. Did it bode well for him. You talked last week about maybe reassessing him. I did probably does. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think that. As it stands now, I mean, I think that we're, you know, I think he's feeling better, obviously, than he had a, you know, a couple weeks ago. With Josh Rattles, obviously, he came here, you know, thinking that there was going to be opportunity for one reason or another. It hasn't been. For you as a coach, you know, a guy who they refer to as a player's coach, how do you go about managing What that? does that mean, Teron? I don't know what that means. Well, anytime, anytime I ask them, they say that. They don't, what do they, what do they say that means? I don't know. Tell you, they, they always say that you have their, their best interests. They say that, you know, you're invested in them emotionally. Those are, are the two things. That's just that being a coach. I mean, that's just being a human being, you know. Um, no, I know. And, and again, I, 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 you know, Josh is, you know, had a good camp, then got injured, you know what I mean? And then so now he you know, got an opportunity. Um, guys came back, and, and there's a million reasons. And so hopefully, um, you know, he keeps you know being ready to go. Explain to those guys this morning, like there's going to be a lot of moving parts. Um, use Nick as an example. You know, know as many positions as you possibly can. Um, help on special teams, uh, and that's a great recipe to, um, to 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 be able to be active on Sunday. So I'm confident that Josh, you know, is going to continue to do that. Does Josh know all the positions? I mean, Josh knows more than one position.